On today's show, Chinese automaker NIO announces a brand new 100 kilowatt hour battery pack and unlike most automakers offers existing customers an upgrade path, the Hummer EV will launch with no electronic speed limit, says GMC engineers, and an all-electric wingsuit that is absolutely bonkers and powered by BMW batteries. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz? Welcome back to another Weekend Roundup. I've survived this week and I hope you have too. And I've got some great stories to share, so let's get right on with it. We start today's show with the news that Chinese automaker NIO has just unveiled a brand new 100 kilowatt hour battery pack for use in its range of electric vehicles. Aside from the cell to pack design that's new for the 100 kilowatt hour pack, which is essentially making the cells part of the pack's structure, what's really interesting about this new battery is the fact that NIO is happily offering the pack to customers as an upgrade for the pack in their existing NIO car be it an ES6 or an ES8. Thanks to the battery swap technology that NIO operates, the swap can be done really simply and packs can either be purchased outright, leased or paid for using the battery as a service product that NIO offers customers, which includes battery swapping for long distance trips. Chinese automakers are often given a hard time, but when it comes to future-proofing cars, I think NIO is doing everything right here. Ever since it first unveiled the e-tron GT as a concept car more than a year ago, Audi has been promising great things of its high-end out-and-out halo vehicle. And this week, it continued the pre-launch teasing by publishing a series of photos and videos of Formula E driver Lucas de Grassi putting the most powerful e-tron GT, the Audi RS e-tron GT, through its paces on the racetrack. While the Audi e-tron GT, which shares the same J1 platform as the Porsche Taycan, is already well endowed in the performance department with 590 horsepower, 440 kilowatts, give or take, the RS variant pushes that to 637 horsepower, 475 kilowatts, meaning it does the stoplight sprint in 3.5 seconds. If it drives anything like the Porsche Taycan Turbo S, it is going to make massive waves with its likely equally big sticker price. The diminutive Candy K27 electric car, a car which got its official launch earlier this year in the United States, has been approved by the California Air Resource Board as being eligible for California's $2,000 EV purchase initiative. This means that when paired with the US federal tax income credit, the company says customers can get the K27 for under 8,000 US dollars. While the Candy K27 isn't what most people will look for in a car, it's very no frills and it manages just 59 miles, 95 kilometers, from a charge of its 17.6 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, Candy America is hopeful that it will attract the attention of car buyers who would ordinarily not be able to buy a brand new electric car. However, with its limited performance and diminutive size, I'm not sure this four-seater can compete against the used car market, where you can now buy a much larger, more capable used electric vehicle for as little as $5,000. What do you think? Just as Tesla is progressing at breakneck speed on its new production facilities in Berlin, Germany and Austin, Texas in the US, so too is General Motors and its battery partner LG Chem, working together as Ultium Cells LLC, progressing full steam ahead with a new battery production facility in Lordstown, Ohio. While the massive battery production facility isn't finished yet, the groundwork and superstructures are now complete, the firm announced this week that it's begun the hiring process to find 1,100 staff who will work at the facility. Different to traditional automotive production lines, those working at Ultium will likely have to deal with clean room conditions for a large part of their day, and the training process, starting now, gives Ultium cells time to make sure that all of the staff are up to speed so that can production can begin as soon as the facility is ready. Nissan is rumoured to be readying the order books for its Aria Electric crossover, which sources suggest will begin to take pre-orders from the US from December onwards. 
Unveiled this year, the Aria's biggest distinction from the Nissan Leaf and ENV200 that came before it, other than the form factor change and target market – it's designed to be a much more expensive upmarket vehicle – is the inclusion of a liquid-cooled battery pack. Nissan had previously had air-cooled, both passive and active battery packs for its electric vehicles, but that decision resulted in poor battery life for both Nissan LEAF and ENV200. With an expected price tag of at least $50,000, the Aria won't be cheap. And interestingly, while Nissan's pre-orders will open soon, we don't expect it to launch outside of Japan until late 2021, or maybe even early 2022. For as nearly as long as Mini has existed, we've had the John Cooper Works variants. More powerful than the stock versions, these mildly hot variants have sat at the top of the Mini family, offering performance and style in one package. Well, now apparently there's a new John Cooper Works variant coming. But unlike every JCW Mini before it, this one will be electric. At least that's according to various sources in Europe, who have not only spied a hot hatch variant of the Mini Cooper SE electric car being tested on the public roads, but have also talked to people who say it's coming. The result, apparently, is going to be something akin to the electric Mini GP, combining the suspension tweaks of the John Cooper Work GP with the electric drivetrain of the Mini Cooper SE. We'll know nothing else other than it's been greenlit and it's coming, so let's hope it delivers. As I'm sure most of you know, it was the US general election this week, and while I'm sure most of you would rather we don't touch on the still ambiguous outcome, at least as of 5.30 when I'm filming this on Friday, you might be eager to hear about the result of ballot question one in the fine Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which passed with a 75% approval. As you might remember from a few weeks ago, this measure was designed as an extension of the state's already DIY-friendly right to repair laws, and it mandates all automakers grant access to their car's telematic systems to independent mechanics and owner enthusiasts for the purposes of repair. It makes it easier for third-party companies like the Electric Garage, as owned by Rich Rebuild star Rich Benoit, to work on electric vehicles, and it should stop automakers having a monopoly on EV repairs. Tesla has received what amounts to be its largest customer order to date for the Tesla Semi Class 8 Big Rig. But rather than be from a large multinational delivery company, a billion dollar superstar, or beverage company, the order came from Pride Group Enterprises, a holding company that operates truck leasing and truck sales operations in both the United States and Canada. This is not only a big deal because of the order size – 150 trucks with an option to buy an additional 350 down the line – but because it could be the first time independent truckers will be able to consider a Tesla Semi as one of their own vehicles. While some independent truckers are claimed to have ordered their own vehicles directly from Tesla, most lease or buy from third parties, so this could be huge news for truck drivers wanting to go electric. A few weeks ago, General Motors' GMC brand unveiled the rebirth of the Hummer in the form of the Hummer EV, an out-and-out -out performance pickup with an insane amount of power and an equally insane price tag. CGI or not, the early videos of it were enough to sell out the Hummer EV Edition 1 in just a few hours. This week, we learned more about the truck, including its likely performance. While final figures haven't been detailed, most electric vehicles have an electronically limited top speed to ensure they deliver on-range promises, but apparently GM is not going to do that with the Hummer EV. It'll keep on going until the motor's natural limits kick in, in order to let the driver pick between stupidly insane performance or long range. I'm not sure if it's a smart or a stupid move, but it's certainly different to auto industry norms. Earlier this year, I was among a group of lucky journalists who were given the chance to drive the Volvo VNR electric box truck and Class 8 big rigs as part of a massive media event celebrating the end of Volvo's Pilot Light's electric truck test program in Southern California, USA. This week, we learned that Volvo is ready to launch the production version of its VNR electric truck early next year. It will make the vehicles in Virginia, USA.
The order books will open next month and, says Volvo, it's all part of a plan to turn its entire truck operations electric. Meanwhile, in Europe, where Volvo has been selling electric trucks for a while, the company announced that it's going to be launching a trio of new, longer-range electric trucks designed exclusively for the European market. With no gears to worry about – there are two gears, but it's an automatic switch between them – these Volvo electric big rigs and trucks are far easier to drive and could potentially save truckers literally thousands in fuel costs. And finally. We've seen plenty of weird and wonderful electric transportation on this channel over the years, from electric human hybrid watercraft through to electric boats, planes, hoverboards, and more. But an all-electric wingsuit, sometimes called a flying squirrel suit, well, that's a new one on us. But it is real, and it just took its first flight. Enter Austrian professional base jumper, skydiver and daredevil Peter Saltzman and his all-electric wingsuit. Featuring a pair of 7.5 kilowatt motors powered by a battery pack made of BMW i battery cells, the suit can fly for around 5 minutes at full pelt – that's 60 miles an hour – more at lower power levels – after launch from a helicopter or plane before the suit wearer pulls the parachute and gracefully descends to Earth. It is utterly bonkers, and I love it. Not sure if I'd be allowed to have a go, but honestly, I'd probably kill myself trying, so best not. And on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure you hit the notification bell below so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't switched yet, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the switch, and when you do, you'll help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be making more great content for you enjoy next week, but until then, please stay safe, remember to wash your hands, and keep yourself healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time!